Does this look familiar? It's a DSLR camera. You got it on the back of your telescope right now. But you're thinking, I want to upgrade to one of these. A dedicated astronomy camera. I'm going to give you my insights and what I think about this particular model. The Altair Astro 183C one-shot color camera. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So today I want to talk to you about this dedicated astronomy camera, the Altair Astro 183C. I hope you can see it. I hope there's not too much glare. But um, yeah, I've been using this for just under a year. It's been about, I guess, about 10 months. And I used to have a DSLR camera attached to the back of my telescope, like I showed you in the beginning of the video. Uh, the main difference between this camera and my DSLR is that my DSLR is unmodified. Uh, now you can pay to get them modified or if you have some technical experience uh, you can do it yourself. Um, me myself I don't <laughs> I don't have any um, I don't have that kind of technical experience but um, you can modify the DSLR cameras so that they're more um, more able to pick up the uh, the hydrogen alpha gas in uh, deep space objects like nebulae and, and things of that nature even in galaxies um, Andromeda and uh, M33 the Triangulum Galaxy are prime examples of that but um, this camera here it's already astro modified although it does have and there's the there's the chip there. It's a Sony chip, very sensitive. Um, I've heard that you can do very short exposures, 10, 20, 30 seconds, up to a minute. Um, and with people that don't have auto guiding, that is a, that, that's really good. Um, you know, you don't have to worry about elongated stars things of that nature. And with being able to do shorter exposures, like I said, no auto guiding is needed. And that enables you to not have to purchase uh, a guide camera and a guide scope. Um, so that will cut down on costs for your, uh, for your hobby as well. But back to the camera. So as you can see there, it's got a fan a USB 3 plug for your cable and an ST4 slot for uh, your ST4 cable. Um, me personally, when I do auto guiding, I don't do shorter exposures on mine. I haven't tried it. Um, <laughs> I guess I should uh, just to see just to see what the uh, what the results would be. Um, now, one thing about this camera, and with some other uh, dedicated astronomy cameras, is they have what's called amp glow, or a starburst pattern, either on the side or the top of the image. And I'll try and uh, post a picture up top here to show what amp glow looks like from a dark compensation frame. So. And this isn't tech cooled, which means uh, thermoelectric cooling. It's not thermoelectrically cooled, which means um, I have to take dark frames when I'm out in the field at the temperature that I took my uh, subframes at. Um, whereas with a thermoelectric cooled camera, um, you can bring that camera into the house. Uh, hook it up to your computer and basically create a dark library. Um, whereas you just set it up for the temperature that you normally shoot at and you tell the computer how long you want those subs to be and how many subs. 
and you can just do it without even being outside because you can just set the temperature once it gets the temperature you start taking your you start taking your darks and you can spend a day and do a dark library for 10 seconds 20 seconds all the way up to 10 minutes if you wanted to um, and do your dark library that way um, whereas this is you have to you have to do it when you're out in the field right at the time that you're doing your astronomy which can be a bit of a pain in the butt especially if you're doing anywhere from three minute exposures five minute exposures ten minute exposures so if you want to take uh, say 20 dark frames at at 10 minutes but that's a long time um, to have to stay up with your with your equipment wait till it done, it's done the dark frames and then uh, tear down or if you're going to uh, if, if you know you're gonna have a good stretch of uh, good weather you just have to go out and cover your telescope so uh, keep the elements off it or birds or anything like that but um, I usually I usually tear down at the end of the night anyway or I'll just bring my stuff into the garage again that that's that's really the only major drawback with uh, with cameras dedicated astronomy cameras that have amp glow um, now uh, as for filters um, if you don't have filters that's fine um, this one here has a, a built-in IR cut filter um, so you know that's what they provided from the factory but um, you may want to shoot with different light pollution filters uh, I have I have a couple here uh, I have uh, Optolong CLS CCD camera filter uh, 2 inch and what this does is it's just it's for light pollution it does it enhances some colors in the uh, in the spectrum of uh, deep sky objects hydrogen alpha oxygen 3 but very 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 minimal um, the one I turn to is this one here uh, this one I don't know if you can see it but it says L enhanced um, this one does a really good job of bringing out the HA and oxygen 3 in uh, deep space targets from uh, from nebulae and even galaxies so those are the two filters I use um, there's a wide range of filters you can get um, Optolong L Extreme now uh, the, uh, the the Optolong L Ultimate it had just been released about a month and a half maybe two months ago um, so people are doing reviews on that but um, yeah I'm gonna go over to the computer and I'm gonna show you some light frames or subs uh, as they're otherwise known um, on how to uh, what what you know what images look like straight out of the camera so let's go over to the computer here and I'll show you what those look like Okay, so we're in PixInsight, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a file here. So this is a file that I took. Uh, it's a light frame, as you can see here, an, or a sub, in other words. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what a three-minute exposure looks like with this camera. 180 seconds, it's three minutes. Okay, let's move this over. So, right just out of the camera in the acquisition software that I use, Nina, um, you can see that this is an the Andromeda Galaxy, so uh, M31, and you can see that with a three minute exposure it's showing the core and faint the faint spiral arms that make up the galaxy and even really dark dust lanes here 
Um, it, it's like that Sony sensor they, is very sensitive. Um, again, like I said, I haven't tried it at shorter exposures. Uh, I might uh, I might do that, but I'm I'm auto guiding, so there's no really any need. But also, it may cut down on my um, on the noise of the image. If if I zoom in here, you can see the pixels, how pixelated it is, and that has to do with um, the length of the the light frame, and um, with with that. Um, you got, uh, with, with longer exposures, you're going to get, a, you're going to get more noise. And I don't know if you can see it just right here, uh, minus the smudge. That's from my imaging train. That's why you have to take flats that that'll be for another conversation. But all flats do is, uh, they take these dust motes out of the way. But anyway, I don't know if you can see a, a little faint glow here. Um, that is the amp glow. Um, in this frame particularly. Um, but, uh, there are cameras, uh, like the, uh, like the ZWO, uh, 533, uh, that has no amp glow. Um, there's other cameras out there. I can't remember exactly which ones, but, um, but this is what a three minute exposure looks like on the 183 dedicated astronomy camera now there's a another difference between these cameras and a dslr um that's the learning curve there is a little bit of a learning curve with these um settings uh, offset uh gain which basically means exposure um like iso on a uh, on a on a dslr that is um the gain on these kind of cameras offsets I'm not totally sure um, what that means um, like I've had this like almost a year like I said 10 months and I really haven't delved into the technical aspects of it um, I'm not a technical person by any stretch of the imagination so that's probably why I haven't really delved into that but um, do I like this camera yeah I'm really enjoying it. I'm really, really enjoying it. Does it have its quirks? Absolutely. Um, as with any piece of technology or uh, anything of that nature, um, it's going to have things that people are going to like and people that uh, and things that people are going to dislike. Um, the thing I dislike the most about this, and it's not a minus, but it is. I don't know if that makes sense. Is having to take the dark frames when I'm out. Uh, in the field or in my backyard, you know, having to set up, um, put put the lens cap on and wait for it to finish. So if I'm going to do uh, 20 darks, 20 dark frames at three minutes, that's an hour. Uh, what I tend to try and do is um, if I know the temperature is going to stay constant or only fluctuate a couple degrees between when I do my dark frames and when I start shooting, um, I'll do them ahead of time I will do them after I'm done setting up once I connect all my uh, all my equipment to my computer and all that and right around dusk just before it gets dark uh, or an hour roughly before it gets dark uh, I'll take my dark frames um, that way I have more time to shoot and I don't have to stay up as late to uh, to take those dark frames because I know they're already done um, and then all I have to do really is take my flats, uh, and they're 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 quick. They're a couple of minutes, and I'm done. So uh, in closing, the Altair Astro Hypercam 183C is a really really good camera. Um, like I said, I'm really enjoying using it. And uh, do I want to upgrade? Sure, I'd like to upgrade. Um, but um, for now. This is serving what I'm doing with astrophotography. Um, I'll post a couple of pictures here at the end. Uh, if you stuck around, that's great. Uh, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, if you've learned anything or if you find any value in this, uh, in this video, uh, please give it a thumbs up. 
Um, if you really like the channel, uh, a subscription would also be appreciated. But uh, until next time, I'm going to wrap it up here. And uh, thanks for watching my channel. Clear skies and stay safe, everybody. See you later.